there. My name is John Walsh and I'm head of the School of Art and Design. Um, this webinar is all about portfolios and our portfolio application process for um, the programmes in our school, in the School of Art and Design, and also the photography programme, which is in the School of Media. Um, just a tiny bit of housekeeping. What we're going to do is ask uh, everyone to keep their cameras off for the moment and uh, keep your mics on mute. Uh, and then a little bit later, I'm going to ask some of the staff to turn on their cameras so you can see them, see what they look like, and they can answer some questions. Um, and we'll have a questions and answers se session at the end. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we're going to um, use the chat function. So we it's, it's just much easier that way. So if you have a question at any point, you can put them in the box and we'll answer them at the end. OK, so we won't answer them maybe straight away when I'm going through stuff. We'll answer them at the end. Um, I've got multiple screens here, multiple presentations I'm trying to juggle, so hopefully I won't uh, make too much of a mess of it and um, and hopefully we won't have any tech issues. So like I said, you're all really, really welcome. Um, I'm just going to share my screen uh, just a second. So here we go, just a minute. OK, so before we get into the portfolio um, presentation, I just want to give you a tiny little bit of context to the School of Art and Design. Um, we are based on our TU Dublin city centre campus, which is in Grange Gorman. It's about a 15 minute walk from O'Connell Street. Uh, hopefully you've all been there. And if you haven't been there, we'd be delighted to see you at any time. I'm going to let you know a little bit about some open days that we have coming up and also about our graduate exhibition, uh, which is on the 1st of June. I'll tell you a little bit about that later. And these are great opportunities for you to come up, see what, what it's like and, and just come and talk to some staff. So we're really easily accessible on both of the Lewis lines and on multiple, um, multiple uh, bus stops as well. We're very happy to be in our new home, which is called the East Quad. It's uh, again on the Grange Gorman campus and it's a magnificent building. It's got state of, state of the art facilities and we're joined in the East Quad um, with our colleagues from the School of Media, uh, the Conservatoire of Music and Drama and the School of Social Sciences, Law and Education. And it's a magnificent building. It's a real creative hub and uh, I think it's got a really en great energy so uh, hopefully you'll get to come and experience that at some point. Um, a tiny bit about the school, our undergraduate programmes uh, include visual communication, fine art, visual merchandising and display design and interior design. They're the programmes we're going to talk about and focus mostly on tonight in terms of the portfolio um, submissions. We also have um, uh, programmes in product design and a really interesting programme in creative industries and visual culture. And this is a program that uh, might be of interest to uh, almost anyone on this call. It's not, there isn't a portfolio element to it. And it's it's a, a program that focuses on things like art, arts policy, arts management, management, art criticism, aesthetics, art and design history, museum studies, curation. And student, students, graduates uh, from that program go on to work in cultural organizations in the art uh, art sector as cultural managers and that kind of thing. So again, it's not a program that requires an application process, but just seen as I think there might be people on this call who are interested in it. I said I'd mention it. We do postgraduate uh, studies as well, right up to PhD level. So if you come and join us uh, uh, at undergraduate level, you can stay right up until you, you complete your PhD if you, you'd like to. Just a, a mention of our, uh, about our staff, and this isn't all our staff at all, but it's something that's really, really important to our school. All of our staff are all, they're all practitioners in their own right. So they don't, don't just teach, they work in industry, they work in their sector, um, and they're, a lot, they're, they're all very high profile individuals and really um, well respected in, their, in the art and design and visual culture sector. So again, this isn't all of them. You'll be able to read their profiles on the website if you like. 
Uh, I mentioned a little bit about our graduate exhibition. I'm not there are some videos. I'm not sure if they'll play on everyone's screen, but I'll, I'll press them anyway. Um, every year our, we have a graduate exhibition from uh, all of the programs in school. Uh, the students produce their work and they exhibit it to, you know, thousands of people who actually um, turn up. I'm not sure if you can hear me over the music or not, but I'll keep on talking anyway. Uh, and this just gives a bit of a sense of the occasion. This, these are last year's videos, so the dates are incorrect, and I'll let you know the date for for the exhibition this year. As I said earlier, it's a really um, it's a really ex good time for applicants to come and see what it's actually like to study at TU Dublin School of Art and Design, and also to get a feeling for the type of work that they will produce by the end of their time there. So, our exhibition. This year will be on the 1st of June, and I'd encourage you, anyone who wants to attend to, to come. If you visit our website, you'll get the info. You can also visit uh, dscax.com. That was our slightly old URL, but a Stubborn School of Creative Arts exhibition. And you'll be able to see the type of work from all of the different pro uh, programs if you actually go on and visit there. It just gives a really it's a it's a a good way of getting to understand what the um the type of work that we produce is all about. Um, so I know what most people are here for is to find out about our portfolio application process. And uh, so I'm going to talk you through this. I've got lots of questions, uh, kind of frequently asked questions. They're the questions we get asked all the time, but undoubtedly you are going to have questions and you can answer them at the end. But I'm just going to take you through this and you can uh, listen. And again, if you have any questions at all, please just type them in the in the in the box and we'll try and answer them at the end. OK. So how do I submit my por uh, my portfolio? We've moved to an online portfolio submission process, as I'm sure you all know at this point, and the URL is tudublin.slideroom.eu. Really important, just put that in. Don't put www before it. Just put it in tudublin.slideroom.eu. Um, we moved, obviously, during COVID to an online application process, and we found it actually works really, really well. And so we've decided to, to keep it. So the closing date for submitting portfolios is Monday 27th of February at 5 p.m. And that's that's a really strict deadline. So you need to get your portfolio in by that date. Uh, which programs require portfolio submission? So our studio based programs all require a portfolio submission. Uh, that's visual communication design, fine art, interior design, visual merchandising and display design. And you submit one portfolio, no matter how many uh, programs you're applying for. So if you're applying for fine art, viscom, interior design, you just submit once and you tick the boxes of the programs. And you also obviously have to remember to select the programs on your CAO as well. So the interesting stuff, what type of work should you submit? What we would like to see is a selection of your work, and it's up to 25 pieces that best represents your drawing, practical, conceptual skills and abilities. And we want to see a range of work. We want to see notebooks. We want to see sketchbooks. And we, we're happy to see finished work and finished pieces as well. But often it's the notebooks and the sketchbooks and the process that we're really interested in. What we really want to see is that you've got an inquiring mindset and the, the ability to explore concepts through your art and design work. So again, we don't want to just see 25 finished paintings. I mean, brilliant if you've got 25 finished paintings, but we'd like to see also your background work, OK? And that's really, really important. Um, can I start my application now and save it for editing uh, and submissions like later? Yes, you can. So if you log on to our system, um, which I'll show you the steps in a few minutes, when you log on, you can upload your portfolio and you can save it then for editing later, right up to the up to the deadline of the 27th of February. Uh, really important if you do that. Um, what you need to do is make sure that you actually do then submit it later. Just uploading your portfolio, it won't actually come through to us until you actually press submit. So it's really, really important that you remember to do that. Um, yes, so remember to press submit. Uh, once you submit your application, though, 
it can't be edited. So again, um, you know, you bear that in mind. So what what you should most likely do is probably wait until a little bit closer to the 27th. Make sure you have everything. Make sure you're really happy with your submission and then press submit. Don't wait until 5 p.m. on the 27th if you because that's when things go wrong. So try and get it in, you know, a day a day in advance is a really good idea. Uh, so what type of files can you upload? So you can upload 25 pieces of work and these can be in various different formats. So they can be images, uh, PDFs, videos, and you can also upload links to media on YouTube or Vimeo. So uh, I would say as well, just be really careful if you're sending us stuff with by Vimeo that we have access to it and that. So the system actually allows you to upload the videos, PDFs and, and images, and it's, it's our preference is really that you keep it all within the system and it's really easy to use. Um, so what if your images and files are too big? So there's no real reason for them to be so big, but if they are a bit too big, there are multiple ways. If you just literally you Google um, reduce image size uh, for free and there are multiple ways of doing it. So on Adobe, um, you can reduce your, your PDF size, um, um, size as well. So you don't need to have huge uh, files and they can be reduced. Uh, yeah, so just on that, there's plenty of space. There's plenty of space for you to put up as much work as you can. Just on that, what we also want to you to think about is how do you curate your work? So it's not just that you upload every single image that you've ever produced, every piece of work. We want to see that you can curate and that you can pick your best work. Um, and we prefer to see that than seeing everything you've ever done since you were four years old. So think carefully about what you upload. So obviously it's an online uh, system, so you're uploading work which might be in notebooks, it might be sculptural, it might be three dimensional work, and they could be really big things. Um, so you need to think a little bit about how you photo photograph your work or how you capture it or how you put it into something that you can then submit to us. So if you're photographing work, we just have a couple of pointers for you. Use a digital camera or a good phone camera. So you can use a phone camera is perfectly fine. Most phones have, have really good cameras now, so perfectly fine to do that. The important things to remember are that you take your time and you don't just take a snap in two seconds and then try and upload it. Because we will also want you to want to see your ability to kind of, you, you know, your ability with composition, you know, how to actually, if you're photographing a bit of sculpture, it's not just the sculpture, it's how you actually compose an image of it. It's really important to us. So try and ensure you have good light as well. You know, sometimes for some things it can be good to get, uh, take things outside or to open curtains or that kind of thing. So a dark room is generally a little bit difficult when you're trying to produce good images of your work. Try and get a flat and even light across your work if you can. Again, this is, can be tricky at times, but sometimes if you go outside, you just get kind of light that spreads across your work and you don't have, we'll say, what you might have in a, in a room, uh, which is, you know, you might be blocking out or creating a shadow across your work yourself. So do your best with it. But we also do know that, you know, it's kind of tricky when you're asked to actually produce images of work um, in this way. So it can be tricky. So, we, you know, do your best, um, but we will take into account that you are submitting submitting digitally. Uh, you could try photographing your work outside again on a nice day, you know, not not on a dark day. It could be best to hang your work on a wall sometimes. Again, if you hang it on the wall, you might not get a shadow. If you're putting things on the floor and then you've got your head over them, you're creating a shadow across your work. Uh, try and place, place your work against a clear background, so not with your whole bedroom uh, in the background if you can avoid it and avoid any clutter or anything that will detract or take away from your work. So again, we'll, we, we understand it's a tricky thing to do, so we'll take all of that into account. But just from your own point of view, it's really good to, it's good practice to get into take nice images and to capture your work in its best possible light. As I said earlier, we're really keen for you to show sketchbooks and notebooks and not just the finished work, but also the kind of build up work. Um, and this is slightly difficult, uh, slightly more tricky, of course. And there's multiple ways of doing this. So some students, uh, some applicants in the past, they 
have scan scan pages of their workbooks and notebooks, and that's perfectly fine. They put them into a PDF. They put them all together, which is brilliant if you can do that, because then we can just work through it page by page. Or another way you can do it is you can um, produce a video. Uh, a video or a slideshow or a PDF. Uh, if you produce a video, like just again, take your time, try and set up your phone or your camera, make sure it's stable and set it up so it's looking at your book. And then you can literally flick through the book. Keep the video short. You can go quite quickly because we can always pause them, pause your work. So you don't have to spend lots of time on each page. So we can we can pause. Um, we can we can pause the videos as we're looking at them. So try and keep them to less than a minute. It's not really a hard, fast rule. Again, you can do a slideshow, so that can be loads of images, photographs put together, and they can be converted to a video as well, relatively easily, or as I said, PDF. Um, as part of the process, there's an applicant statement, and we would strongly encourage you to do that. So it, it is optional, but we encourage you to do it because it gives you a chance to explain your work, uh, tell us who you are, what excites you, what drives you creatively. It gives context to your work. It lets us know where you are in your life and your studies and all of that, what you've done um, and, and what has, drives you and what makes you, what, uh, actually most importantly, what has made you apply for the programme that you're, you're applying for? You know, why have you selected it? Why do you want to be an artist? Why do you want to be a designer? Why do you want to be an interior designer? Tell us in detail and that really, really helps us. So strongly encourage you to do that. You don't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be too long. I think there's uh, 1000 words maximum. You don't even have to do that much, you know, but just give us a tiny bit of context. It really helps us as we're looking through the portfolios. You can also use it as an op opportunity to explain a little bit of the work if you if you like. Um, how will your work be marked? Again, this is a question that we get asked a lot. Uh, firstly, uh, it'll be marked very, very fairly. It's marked by a panel of lecturers and academics. At least three on each team will look at your at your work. We always aim to give you the benefit of the doubt. Our aim is always to, um, you know, be as encouraging as uh, as we can. Um, in cases where we feel the work isn't, you know, if you, maybe you mightn't be ready uh, to come and study with us. It's it's really just that it's not that we feel your work is bad or anything like that. It might be just that you need to, you know, maybe do a portfolio program or you need to take a little bit more time or to develop your portfolio. So um, like I said, we generally always aim to to be positive and to be generous and the occasions when we feel a portfolio isn't quite good enough. It's just because we we don't want to take students onto the program where they they will struggle. So, you know, there's always a time that you can apply again next year and that, so don't take it too 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 badly if, um, if, if you don't get a great mark. So we have three categories that we mark. Uh, the first one is evidence of drawing ability, and that's 200 marks. And we'd like to see things like freehand sketches, observational drawings, and or technical drawings. So we really like to see observation drawings, so something you're actually looking at. Ideally, not from a magazine, not from a two-dimensional thing, it's great to see observational drawings that, you know, if, if you can do them of actual um, three dimensional things. So the, the real world of maybe of an interior or of an object or whatever it is. We like to see use of color and texture and we like mixed media. So whilst it's beautiful to see lots of maybe really nice pencil drawings, it's also nice to see your ability to use uh, different medias as well. Uh, evidence of practical ability. This is your uh, Kind of ability to make things three dimensional, but also to engage in things uh, in a two dimensional way. So it's use of materials, use of textural things um, and to be able to work through a bit of a process is what we're looking for as well here. So it's not again all about the finished uh, object. It's about you creating and kind of capturing uh, your process of creation um, through your practical ability. So this can sometimes be captured in things like photographs and um, uh, and also the fi finished objects as well. And we want to see your control over media. So like things can be messy, but when they should be messy. So sometimes things are meant to be messy, but sometimes things should be controlled and considered. And we want to see you present this work in, in, in a really positive light and, as well. 
and really important uh, evidence of conceptual ability. This is your ability to investigate, to generate ideas, to think and be critical and to be imaginate, imaginative and uh, to be creative. So again, really, really important category. So again, just to go back to what I said earlier, we want to see that you have an inquiring mindset and the ability to explore concepts through your art and design work. So really, it's very much about your exploring those intellectual concepts through your work. Uh, how many points do you need to get? That's a, an answer. That's a question. I don't have an exact answer to, but to give you a little bit of guidance, the maximum points that you can possibly get is 600 points. Your portfolio points are combined with your leaving cert points. Uh, generally, that's uh, there are different entry uh, possibilities, but that's that's the generally how it works. Um, the minimum points required for each program are 400 points for visual communication, 400 points for fine art, 350 points for interior design and 300 points for visual merchandising and display design. Now, really important, not applicate all applicants who receive the minimum points will be offered a place. OK, so it gives you a good chance if you have uh, the minimum points, but it doesn't mean it depends on, on other factors. It depends on the amount of other applications we have. It depends on their leaving certs and and other factors as well. So. Um, that's the points. And how do you get your results? Um, results are going to be sent to you by the email address supplied to you uh, on your CAO application. So that's really important. Again, make sure when you're um, applying through our uh, through Sideroom that you use your same email address as well. Um, and that you also have your up to date CAO number as well so that we can match you up with the CAO information and then you will receive your email through the CAO. And what you have a query um, for general course or portfolio queries, uh, you can contact uh, creative arts at tu.ie and there's a phone number there and we'll do our best to help you with any queries that you have. Um, just to give you a little bit of an overview of the portfolio system, this is 2021, but it's the exact same uh, process. So once you log on to tu.ie, uh, you'll be you'll see this page in front of you here. Uh, you will need to, to sign up, but it's really, really, really simple, straightforward process. Once you sign up, you will be able to select the program that you want to apply for. And again, there are two programs, the School of um, Media Photography and the School of Creative Arts, uh, all programs. And again, the Creative Arts, all programs covers visual communication, visual merchandising and display design, interior design and fine art. So because that's a joint application process for 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 those programs. Uh, as I said, if you need want to apply to any of the finer of we'll say the creative arts programs and the school of media programs, you do need to apply separately for for those two. Uh, you'll see those both listed in the portal. So when you get in and when you select your program, you I'll just show you the steps through. You need to declare that the work submitted is all yours, which obviously is incredibly important. It must be your own work. It can't be anything that anyone else has done, and you have to um, agree to that here. So you make your application, uh, your applicant declaration, then you need to put in your CAO number. Again, obviously this year you'll be putting in your 2023 CAO number, not as I am on the screen. So you select the programs that you're interested in, uh, you enter your date of birth and again your date of birth helps us connect um, your to your CAO in the case of any of any problems so it's important that you put that in. Once you do that uh, you can make your applicant statement and again really strongly encourage you to do that because it just sets up us with a bit of context for your work. And when you do, do that you're you're shown to the screen where you can just start to add the media and you simply click on add media and you can select the files from your computer. And again, this is simple for is it's really quite a simple process for for people who are tech savvy, like I'm sure you all are. Um, if you do have problems with us with the, anything, you can email us and we will uh, do our best to answer. But it is fairly straightforward. When you uh, select something you want to upload, you can give it a title and you can add some additional details. Uh, you got up to a thousand characters, I think you don't need to do that much, but it is really helpful at times, you know, if you say maybe why you did a painting or why you did a piece of work or what or when you did it. 
that can give us a little bit of context. Again, it's optional. Don't feel you have to do it for every everything you upload. It, it's it's really not um it's not a requirement. But if you want to, you can certainly do it. Uh, just I, I put in some images of different types of work, and some of this is really good. So don't be too put off by it. These are some really good portfolios. Again, this this that you're seeing in front of you are kind of workbooks that somebody has photographed and put together, and it shows real engagement uh, in a kind of a creative research process uh, where somebody's actually uh, producing these kind of collages and uh, and imagery. That's a mix of I think typography and graphic design and all sorts of things. But we can see a real kind of inquiry in this and a real development of the of the of the work. As 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 it kind of goes from page to page, again, nice to see just nice images of your actual um, workbooks if you have any. It's nice, we'll say, for interior design. It's nice to see sketches like this, drawings that show that maybe how you think about a space. Um, again, you might have some finished or semi-finished drawings, and again. What's nice is when you see a little bit of development of a subject or theme, and that's what I want to show you in this one. Again, <clears throat> these are all subjects, uh, a theme that's kind of been developed. So it's not just one finished painting uh, or drawing or illustration. It's multiple versions. So we can see how somebody is working through a process in these and working up towards what could be a final piece of work or might or might not even be a final piece of work. Um, Again, you might have interior design images. Um, again, if you uh, some students might have kind of done a portfolio course where they've done uh, interior design, so you can include things like that. And then once you're finished, you need to just make sure that you remember to submit your application. Again, really important. Um, unless you submit, a, we we won't actually see your see your application we won't be able to, to mark it so make sure you submit your application we will send you reminders by the way as well uh, closer closer to the time so always check your email uh, uh, just to make sure you're on top of it um okay so it's just some dates because we're nearly finished me talking uh you'll be happy to find out uh We'd really love you to come and see us. Um, some of you, I'm sure, have been up to the East Quad and come to see us. If you haven't, there are plenty of opportunities for you to do that. You can come on the 22nd of April for we we have an open day. I think it's a Saturday and it's uh, it's a morning. Um, so if you check the TU Dublin website, all you have to do is if you just go to Google and do TU Dublin open day, you'll find us there. You'll find the, app, um, the, the form that you might need to fill in in order to come up. Uh, and also there's our graduate exhibition again, so keep an eye on the TU Dublin website and on our school page on the TU Dublin website and also on our Facebook page and uh, and that kind of thing. And you'll see you'll start to see um, closer to the graduate exhibition, uh, some uh, promotion of stuff will come through and you'll, you'll find out about what's what's going on exactly and when. OK, so what I going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen uh, and what I'm going to ask our staff to do is if we have staff from um, any of the programs, if the program chairs would like to turn on their camera, that would be great. Uh, we could have one or two from each program would be really good. If we have more, that's fine as well. And anyone, so we've got fine art, visual communication. We've got we got anyone from interior design. We got Tracy, brilliant. Okay, so I'll do some uh, some very brief introductions. Uh, and Con is coming in there too. Great, and Nora, super. Anyone else wants to join in? The more merrier. Uh, so I, I I'll do some really brief uh, brief uh, introductions. We've got uh, Timothy Cover from uh, photography. Um, Perry Meekin from Visual Merchandising and Display Design, Michael O'Hara from Fine Art, Marianne Bulger, again from the School of Media, so looking after photography and also formerly of our school as well, so Marianne can answer lots of questions, I'm sure. We've got Con Kennedy from uh, Visual Communication Design, Tracy Dalton from Interior Design, and Nora Duggan as well, who works across programs. She works on Fine Art and also in, in the School of Media as well. So, um, I'm going to ask uh, 
that's Barry or Nivan. I'm joined on the call as well by Barry Sheen, who's head of design, and Nivan Kelly is there someplace as well. She's head of fine art and right. culture. Hi guys. Hello. Uh, hey, so I think we, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll have to figure it out as we go along. Uh, if anyone has any questions, would people like to go through the questions? Some I know have been answered, but if there are any questions in the chat, could Barry or Nivan, do you want to call them out? Um, oh. Uh, do you want to do that at the end, John, or do you want us to do it now? Oh, I think we do it now because I think we're kind of we're at the end of me doing the talking part anyway. Uh, oh, that's uh, going great. I'll go. I'll go back <laughs> to the start of the chat then, and I'll try and get answer the ones that um, that get asked. Actually, I'll tell saying... you. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put my colleagues here on the spot. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so Kerry, do you want to say something? Two seconds, just about interior design. Or sorry, about visual merchandising and display design. Uh, okay, I actually gave a talk yesterday to students at Marino College, so I'll kind of say the same things that I said to them. So remember that there's 200 points, there's 600 points overall, and they're divided into three segments. So there's 200 points available for drawing, so make sure that we have evidence of drawing. There's 200 points for conceptual, so make sure that we can give you two, you know, up to 200 points for that, and there's 200 points for practical. So I think remember that we need to see those three things in the portfolio, because there's 200 points allocated to each of those, and that's really important, you know. So don't uh, just give us drawing. Think of the other 400 points as well. And Kerry, anything about the visual merchandising program or? Um... Well, I mean, obviously, we obviously we've got 200 points to mark on on drawing, but also we really like to see practical and that's your ability to make something, you know, maybe make something out of 3D, take photographs and put those into your portfolio. So we really like to see that and obviously some uh, some evidence of conceptual thinking. OK, great stuff. Uh, Mick, uh, Michael O'Hara, are you? Yeah. Any, anything uh, from fine art or anything? Yeah, there's a few things I, I, I mentioned and, and very much echoing Kerry there. Um, I suppose one thing that we're particularly interested in is, is able to see process. So um, you mentioned John in your presentation and you gave a lovely example there of uh, some of the notebook work. Uh, so we, we, were, we always encourage as part of the submission uh, for the portfolio is to have, I would suggest a minimum of two notebooks, even more perhaps. Uh, and what they do is they give us a sense of, as you mentioned, John, um, investigation, inquiry. They capture a lot of the kind of conceptual ideas that you might be looking at. We're somewhat less interested in perfectly rendered, finished pieces of work. Um, uh, we we like to see the, the, the just the kind of progress of ideas. I think that's true for all for all the programs, uh, but for certainly I think it's worth keeping that in mind if you're applying for your portfolio is to keep that idea of capturing how you get to some of the finished pieces and the notebook is a great vehicle for that. It's something that we very much uh, encourage within the program itself that students get really um, familiar with the notebook as a research tool. So um, yeah, I would just stress that perhaps in your submission, make sure to include that and make it a visible part of your portfolio submission. All right, Tracy, are you, is there anything specific? I know they've probably covered a lot, so. Yeah, everything that's been said before, I suppose with interiors as well, we like to see that you push to the fore that you want to do interior design, three-dimensional design, architectural design, product design kind of related things. Um, and no matter how much you think you mightn't have the experience that even if you were to, um, we want to see a photograph, the, the environment, buildings, um, we want to see you even survey a space in your own house or um, in somewhere else that you might get access to and actually come up with your own proposal for a space and, you know, even produce mood boards, play around with 3D programs you find. Um, we want to see sketching, we want to see creative um, conceptual ability, you know, um, so all of that, if that's pushed to the fore, then we know if you've picked three things that you're applying for that we you re, that you really want to do interior design and it tells us that so that's that's important okay so that's great thank you tracy and com uh, com who looks after viscom hi guys i'm i mean again without sounding like a, i'm a broken record sketchbooks <laughs> i certainly know when we had physical portfolios uh, the first thing i look at is the sketchbooks 
uh, because the sketchbooks then give me an idea of what's actually in the portfolio. And, you know, if, if I see a, a nugget of an idea in the sketchbook and I see it implemented in the portfolio, for me, that's a, a great connection. I know somebody in the chat asked about kind of stuff to put in the portfolio and someone asked, could they put in their own version of the TU Dublin uh, identity? Uh, absolutely reimagine things, but I'd love to see that in the sketchbook. I'd love to see things like a brand mapping about what th the values of a, a university would be and then to see then that implemented in the portfolio. So not just the logo, but how would that logo look like on a, a Swedish stationery, on a student card, on the website, on an app, on a wayfinding system? And that shows the implementation of that. And that's, I think, was, I think what Kerry was talking there earlier about the practicality of the work. So you, you're showing the genesis of the idea, you're showing the development of the idea, and then you're showing the implementation of the idea. Absolutely, yeah. So the thinking behind it as well, not and not just the finished uh, finished part. Okay, so have we got any questions? Uh, John, I'm trying to go through the chat and actually see any of the questions that didn't get asked. So Bob answered a lot of the questions and, and various people are answering here and there. Um, somebody asked, did you need a third language in the Leaving Cert to be able to study architecture and interior design? I would say no. Um, how many places are available for QQI applicants? That sure. depends on the programme and it should be on the uh, web page, the TU Dublin web page. So I, I, I know, I think yeah. we have six, so it depends. Yeah, Bob, on has, Bob has a link there for us up already, Thanks. so. Okay. Thanks. And then regarding presenting your portfolio of slides, is there a limit to the number of slides? I think it's 25. Is that right, John? Yeah. So if you were just uploading 25 images, uh, then it's 25, 25 images. If you want to upload more, you can combine things into a PDF and that PDF can have multiple pages provided it's below the limit, which I think for a PDF was was 10 megabytes. So again, you can multiple you can have multiple um, uh, multiple files with lots of images in each. One thing I would say to you, like really um, curate your work, you know, as well. Upload the the the, the things you're really proud of, the more recent things. Um, uh, we sometimes see people who upload everything they've ever done, and it 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 doesn't show your ability to kind of uh, uh, be critical of your own work and to be able to pick what's what's strong and what isn't. So just curate it a bit you know maybe what you might have is like maybe one or two notebooks um mm -hmm. or two or three notebooks even that that's fine and and then some finished work or some things you really want to focus on and they could be uploaded as, as images uh, john there's questions here around a sketchbook and a notebook and uh how much of the art in your sketchbook might relate to the course you're applying to i think these are interesting yeah so sketch Books and notebooks. I, I, if I'm not sure if the question was if they're different or it, like I suppose we we want to see the sketchbooks. We call them sketchbooks, but they can be beyond sketchbooks. They can be kind of like scrapbooks. They can have uh, images, photographs put in them. They can have photographs of, of three dimensional work. All of that. So that's your kind of we call it a workbook. Um, in terms of the difference between the different programs, so. Uh, it, it can be slightly, slightly, slightly tricky because we've got one application we, we process and one way that we judge portfolios for, uh, you know, the different programs. And we do, as the staff have said, we look at them slightly differently, but overall we're marking on the same, same things, your ability to think creatively. And that can be expressed if you're focusing on interior design, your ability to think creatively will be expressed through maybe uh, an, an interior, if you're uh, focusing on fine art, it'll be expressed in a different way. So we're judging the same thing, but it can be expressed in lots of different ways. And I think the staff have covered that. Sorry, Con wants to come in there and Mary, Marianne. Yeah, John, I just uh, you just remind me of something there um, when you were talking earlier about the uh, assessing the portfolios and that we're in teams. And it's highly likely that the team will be made up of people from different programmes. So if you had, for example, a portfolio that was heavily <laughs> based on interior design, and that's really what you want to do, you're not going to have a bunch of visual communication designers judging that work or uh, grading that work. So we're, we're split up like that. So you get a very broad uh, uh, grouping of people within the team. So everyone gets kind of, as John said, gets graded fairly and openly. Marianne? 
Yeah, just to say that um, there is a slightly different um, kind of emphasis in the photography portfolio so that you're, you know, it's kind of you may uh, your portfolio may end up being looked at twice in two slightly different ways. If you've applied perhaps for fine art first and photography second, you might end up getting to kind of two bites of the cherry or two looks at the portfolio. Um, I don't know, Tim, did you get a chance to say anything about the photography? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Oh, sorry. Apologies, Tim. That's OK. No, that's well. Um, I always seem, seem to be coming on here, but I'll yabber away for a moment. So with the portfolio, we have guidelines on the website, the same spot as the uh, programs for art and design. And again, we suggest a guideline of 25 pieces. And really, one of the things we're looking for is not just 25 random photographs, but your ability to communicate with photography. So that is one of the three categories that we measure. And so you may show maybe four or five pictures from three or four different projects, and you could take different images around that idea, around that theme, not just as a single image, but showing multiple images of that idea, the concept, your ability to communicate. And then we're also looking for your technical ability, but we don't expect people to be brilliant technically, because that's why you're coming to college. So we're happy to see people experiment and try different things, things that work really well, things that you're happy with. And the third category that we're really looking for is your evidence of creative ability. How are you exploring the world with the camera? How are you making images that show your interaction with your ideas and the world around you? So there's a lot of scope there for people to experiment and dive in. And we love that aspect of all the different ideas that people bring to the course. And people can present that well in their 20 to 25 best pictures, thinking about how they work together. And of course, it's a little bit easier for us a lot of times because you're usually shooting in JPEGs. You've got digital files that you can upload. But we're also happy to see workbooks and, as John said, that um, applicant statement is a nice spot for you to communicate why you'd like to do this field, what photography means to you. So there's a lot of overlap here and um, it tends to work really well with this application process and people have told us in the past that it's really quite easy to make those that submission through the slide room application. So that's great. We're looking forward to seeing more stuff. OK, thank you, Tim. I can see there's lots of questions coming in. And I think they're being answered, but I don't know. Is there anything we've yeah. kind of missed? There's, there's, there's lots we haven't. I'll, I'll go through them, John, and then we'll okay, see. Great. Uh, should we or should we not add notes or text on our PDF uploads? I think explanatory text is good, but you know, use sparingly. And, and as I say, that's another view. Uh, I'm trying to look at the ones that weren't answered. Um, so here's a good one. Should I, can I use SketchUp for my interior design portfolio? Absolutely, Eugene. Absolutely. It'd be great if you did. Um, Melissa says, can you put in redraws that you do of other people's art? I think so. Yeah. Anyone got a view? I mean, I, I, a, a bit of that. I don't necessarily see a problem with a book. What, what I suppose, and actually maybe Mick or somebody else can answer. Like what we want to see is, again, that inquiring mindset. So yeah, in a way, yeah. why are you doing it? Is it purely to copy something or is it uh, to develop it in a different way? Or I, I don't know. Has anyone else got a, a view? I suppose okay, it should just okay. it should it should just show an example of what you're interested in. That is the function of the notebook in many ways. And you know, you know, it, there's no harm to have a little bit of that, but it shouldn't be exclusively just say copied work per se. It should be you know, you know, just good, good good to have examples of primary drawing, but also really the notebook should function to support maybe the other elements in the submission. So, you know, what you're maybe researching or what you're interested in or what your what the final pieces are actually you know, based upon, you know, so the kind of project base is a good way of thinking of it. So the, the drawing and the drawings in the notebook should reflect that. OK, does it matter if you didn't take art for the Leaving Cert? Well, we marked the portfolio and your Leaving Cert results just come in. So, yeah, you don't have to do art. It's it's probably good if you did, but you don't have to. I didn't do it as it happens. Um, if you have had a medical injury and unable to draw, can you get an extension? I'm not sure I can answer that. <laughs> 
We can if we have um, grounds. We might if somebody wants to e if that person wants to email us directly at creativeirs at tu uh, dot ie. Uh, what we have to make sure is that we're 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 uh, fair to everybody and give yeah. everyone the same chance. But we have had in the past people who've broken their arms and people who can't do things. And provided we have some medical evidence or whatever, we can provide an extension. So again. As long as we can stand over it um, and we're being fair to everyone, we can do it. Yeah. OK, can you send in unfinished artwork? I think the answer is yes. People talked a lot about notebooks. Um, can QQI points be combined with leaving cert points? Hmm. Or can it be combined uh, with portfolio? Uh, hi, guys, Bob here. I've answered Bob, that one. On? I'm okay. great in yourselves. Uh, really enjoying the chat. Uh, I did art for my leaving cert, Barry. Not that it did me wow. any good, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you can't combine QQI points with leaving cert points. Now you can combine your leaving cert points with your portfolio points, and you can combine your QQI points with your portfolio points. But QQI entry and leaving cert entry are two separate routes, so you can't combine the points of the two. Cool, thanks, Pop. Okay, Great, so can you recap on the file size, John, for uploading again, please? Says John. The file size, I can indeed. I'll have to go back and just have a quick look myself. But it is. Hang on. Uh, okay, uh, I've got a lengthy portfolio. Uh, sorry, so let me just check. Uh, it is, I'm pretty sure it's five, uh, five megabytes. It's all on the website anyway, so I think it's five megabytes for images. Uh, yeah, here we are. Five megabytes for images, 10 megabytes for PDFs, and 250 megabytes for videos. So again, there's there should be no problem in terms of uh, file size. Cool. OK, can photographs be included in the portfolio even if I'm going for interior design? Yes. What exactly? Oh, do you mean? I uh, Sorry, is that I suppose photographic work as in photo? Um, yeah, yeah. So they yeah, can. Yes. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. What exactly is the difference between sketchbook and notebook? I would say there's no difference unless anyone's got any other uh, other idea. No, not really. No. OK. Uh, does much of the art in the sketchbook have to relate to the course you're applying to? That's interesting. I'd say ideally if it does, it'd be better, but not not necessarily then you got any other views no again a, a mix because we we yeah. mark on those things uh, on 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 the the three categories and they're all uh, on the website if you want to check on the program page or on the the port the um portfolio section on the okay. tu website it gives all of this information so it's nice if we see a focused like i mean i suppose if we see lots of interiors design drawings and then you're applying for fine art that's maybe not a great indication that you've thought about it too much. So it's good if we see focused kind of work uh, related to the work that you apply for. OK, there's a question about, the minimum, amount of, question about the minimum amount of drawings, which I'd say is one, but you'd be better off with a, with a range of things. Um, can you submit multiple videos of different and the same sketchbooks? Yes, yeah. You put up, Tom? Uh, I'm not quite sure how many videos. I think it might be 10. I'm not quite okay. sure. Again, I think it with, with videos, look, use them kind of sparingly because, you know, I, I suppose if you're using videos, we were expecting videos of notebooks. And probably if you've got, I'd say, maximum five notebooks, that should be yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. What are the required points if I'm doing the IB diploma? I don't know that answer. Bob, are you? Uh, Able to answer that? I'm not quite sure myself. We might have. Uh, to... Apologies, I was I was chatting away into a muted microphone. Um, for the international baccalaureate diploma, we'd have to take your details and come back to you on that. Okay, perfect, uh, Valerie. If you could send those into uh, Creative Arts at TUDN, uh, I think. Is the... Uh, what if you never studied on an ending related course which you want to do? Most people won't have. I mean, if you've show, shown an interest in art and a sketchbook and 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 leaving cert, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, can I use my official leaving cert work? I think you can. What yeah. is QQI? There you go, Bob. What is QQI? Uh, hi again, everybody. Uh, QQI stands for Quality and Qualifications Ireland. Uh, it QQI points refer to points from PLC courses, FETAC courses, courses in colleges of further education. They can be at uh, QQI level five or QQI level six. Cool. Thanks, Bob. Um, how much should you include for artist artist research? Yeah, there's no there's no hard uh, um, 
answer to that. Again, like I say, overall, we like want to see your your artistic research. So so we want to see right from the start up to the up up to the finish. We want to see the process, so not just the finished pieces. So, um, like if you have a, I, I'm not saying you couldn't put one standalone painting, for example, that you've done without any background. I'm not saying you couldn't do that. But what's interesting for us is to see the research work, you know, uh, the development work, and then maybe to see the finished a finished uh, painting. So you have to be able to as well judge these things yourself. So. OK, here's a complicated one, John, you free to answer. Does each page of a sketchbook count as a piece of the 25 pieces in the portfolio? So if it's uh, if it's all combined in a PDF, so you could in theory have 100 pages in a PDF. Now, again, you might run foul of the file size issue, but you can if you only upload one PDF with 25 pages, that um, counts as one file, basically, and you can upload 24 more files. OK, um, a number of people have asked, will this recording be made available and if so, where? I believe it'll be emailed to all participants. I think uh, that's that, that's our plan. And I think even last year's one is also available. So um, I think that might be on our website. So we will be emailing everyone. So okay, here's an interesting question. Should most of the works be done in, in inverted commas traditional art or digital paintings done in Photoshop and other programs? Is one at an active disadvantage to the other? It's a really good question. Again, uh, probably what we want to see is a bit of a mix. I think we would be slightly worried if we only saw digital art, but we uh, it, it's it, it's great if we, if we do see some of it. But again, our, our on balance, I'd say we probably prefer to see um, some of the with traditional art practice, which you know is uh, I suppose uh, we'll be able to more easily see the evidence or the background work, you know. So we'd like to see a bit of both, but we do definitely want to see your ability to do hand sketches and that kind of stuff. John, if okay. I don't mind me jumping in there, I, I think that's a very good question that that person has asked, because certainly from a visual communications design program point of view, yeah. for our students that are going into illustration, uh, a lot of them are using Procreate and they're using Procreate more so now than the traditional uh, sketching. However, they still have the sketches done in Procreate and they have all the layers in Procreate. So you could do um, uh, like um, a screen grab video of you creating your illustration via Procreate and exporting that out on your iPad as a QuickTime movie. So certainly include things like that in, in your portfolio. But I would say, as John was saying there, yeah, if you're showing digital, show how it's been created. But certainly there is still an emphasis on uh, uh, traditional skills. And if you talk to any of our external assessors, uh, that are working in the industry, they'll say the same thing. They still want to see, uh, you know, thumbnail sketches uh, for ideas on 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 paper. John, while you're there, uh, could you tell me what it's like studying visual communication and the different aspects to the course? Well, I'd be very biased on that, Barry, as you know, because I did that program <laughs> uh, back in the day. So I'm a graduate of that program, and uh, so. Um, uh, what I'd say is um, it's a very diverse program uh, in that uh, people seem to think that visual communication design is just graphic design. It's not. It's just one element of it. And we have students who will uh, you know, go into user experience design or systems design, as well as the traditional fields such as uh, graphic design and branding and packaging design and uh, and digital design as well but we also have a significant number of students in the past number of years who have become very successful book illustrators and uh, students who, who, who've made movies and go into video production so it, you know visual communication design is a catch-all phrase like without boring people in my research there's 74 different sub-disciplines uh, within that so the world's your oyster okay i, I think i've got um, most of the questions um do we make a difference between Irish people and people from other countries? Uh, Bob, do you want to answer that? Because it, it's slightly complicated depending on where you be from. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, no, we accept applicants from all over the world. Um, any uh, basically once you meet the minimum entry requirements and there's a place available for you, 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 you stand a very good chance of being accepted onto the program. Uh, we do take applications from both within Ireland and within the European Union, and then we also take applications from international students. Now, an international student in this context is 
somebody who needs a student visa to enter Ireland. If you don't need a student visa to enter Ireland, we don't consider you an international student and you can compete for a place on a programme with ever everybody else. Cool, thanks, Bob. Uh, no Sandra asked me, how do I do my cool background thing? It's a blur in Microsoft Teams. They've added you blur your background. You choose some stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody wants to know if they got into one course, could they change to another course? Very difficult to do. My best advice is do your best to find out the course you want to be in. And, and go from there. Uh, can I use a PowerPoint slideshow PDF for my portfolio presentation? You can export the PowerPoint as a PDF. That would work, I think. Uh, Con, you're the expert there. Would it work? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it certainly um, would. And just sorry, Barry, just to cut across there, I just want to uh, follow up on a point that uh, yeah, Bob sure. made there about international students. I don't think none of us have mentioned there's an opportunity for our students to do Erasmus. Uh, so th it's a great opportunity for students to go abroad. Uh, typically, if it's VizCom, it's typically the first semester in third year. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, any of the students, because uh, I'm the third year tutor, any of my students to go away in third year, uh, they come back absolutely raving about being away. They love the experience of going to a different university. And like that's a great opportunity as well as part of the learning here. Okay, this question, would product design cover aspects of visual communication? A, a little bit, but not really. The focus is on designing products, but you, you, you know, you would learn some of the similar bits of software that might be taught in visual communication, but they're, they're different programs. Um, John, I think I've got to the end of most of the questions that I can kind of see. Yeah, um, and we're, we're bang on um, seven o'clock pretty much. So I think, I mean, there are other questions. I'm sure there are people out there. We've covered a, a huge amount. But our doors are always open. So if you have questions, um, you can email us, attend an open day, uh, give us a phone call, and um, we're we're always really happy. Uh, you know, you know, even if people want to come up at a different point, if you if you make contact us with us, our staff are gen generally very friendly and happy to show people around and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of it. Uh, cool. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope that we'll see some of you in uh, September. So uh, if not before, hopefully we'll see you before then too. But uh, look, we'd be delighted to have you uh, have you come and study with us. And I think that's it from from all of us. Thanks everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Thanks for coming by.